Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the presentation for Investigator Resources. Investigator is a base metal and precious metal explorer, primarily in South Australia in the Gawla Craton. Its key project is the Paris Silver Project, uh, which is currently Australia's highest, uh, highest grade non byproduct silver project in the country. And the company has a current aim of upgrading uh, and completing the pre feasibility study for the project. Um, the company also has a number of other projects in the Gold Craton, which uh, will be discussed as well in the presentation. BMD today, uh, Andrew McElwain uh, is doing the presentation. Andrew is a mining engineer, uh, has 35 years experience at Mount Isa, Western Mining, Lafayette, Unity, amongst, amongst others. And uh, throw it over to, uh, to Andrew um, and look forward to the presentation. Well, thank you very much, Mark, and thanks for the introduction. And uh, today it's uh, my pleasure to talk about the uh, Paris project, predominantly about the Paris project. But uh, look, thank you very much to NWR Communications for putting on this virtual conference. And as Mark said, uh, South Australia is uh, uh, focusing the Silver project. And uh, look, in the 40 odd presentations over the three days of this conference, we are the only silver only project. So, uh, you know, this is uh, a great, uh, great uh, place to hear some story as uh, a story about our silver exposure in, uh, in South Australia. Look, the normal disclaimer I would normally skip over and say you can read that on our website, but I do want to point out that our competent person, uh, Jason Murray, who's named here, has been with the project actually since the middle of 2012. And, uh, and he's our exploration manager based in Adelaide. Uh, he has a senior project geo who works with him, Andrew Alessi. Andrew's been uh, on the project also since 2012. And uh, it's the history that these guys bring uh, with them, which is fantastic in us having the confidence uh, to advance the silver project, as I'll talk about today, where we've got a significant drill program underway uh, and we uh, are looking forward to uh, presenting in PFS uh, in 2021. The, uh, sorry, just very quick on the button, uh, just a very quick snapshot to Investigator, listed uh, on the ASX as IVR, as I mentioned, absolute uh, leverage to the silver price. And you can see that in the graph on the right hand side there with the Investigator share price in blue over the last 12 months, mimicking the, uh, the US dollar silver price, except for the departure out uh, in the more recent months where since uh, September, the start of our drill program, we've been delivering news and, uh, and our, our price has started to uh, move ahead of the silver price, which is encouraging. Focus on the silver project uh, called Paris and South Australia. It's 100% owned by Investigator, 42 million ounces and of silver, 55,000 tonnes of lead in a jaw compliant resource. Uh, in today's, uh, today's prices, that's about $1.5 billion worth of metal value in the ground. Um, we have uh, regional exploration potential I'll talk about uh, within five kilometres of Paris that might enhance that project. Uh, as I said, tenements in South Australia and one in, in uh, Tasmania. But clearly, uh, as I'll talk about in the next slide, an experienced and capable board. I've mentioned the management team. Uh, we've got uh, a wealth of experience in project development, uh, financing and project, uh, project operations. Uh, capital structure as of uh, the 17th of November, a little over 1.13, uh, 1.1 billion shares issued. Uh, we have 183 million listed options that, uh, that expire in December this year. Uh, those options are well in the money and in fact they've been uh, gradually being exercised. Uh, if they are all exercised by the end of the year, there's another $6.5 million in capital inflow. Uh, 30 odd million employee options uh, and 15 million performance rights, which are um, uh, associated with my, my performance rights, associated with longevity of service and uh, performance criteria. Uh, more recent share price, uh, 6.8 cents, uh, had got to 6.9 cents uh, this week, which is the highest share price in, uh, in about eight years. Uh, month, uh, the 12 month range you can see there from 0.8 of a cent uh, back in March uh, post COVID uh, gives us market capitalization 77 million. We've got a little under 10 million cash. Uh, Marion uh, in, is a UK uh, precious metals fund, which is our major shareholder. They took up a 50% uh, of the placement we did in August, uh, then exercised options, and they're sitting at 17%. Top 20 owned 35% of the company and uh, about 4,000 shareholders. 
Kevin Wilson would be known many uh, to many of the uh, listeners today uh, uh, as uh, Nick, as is our non-executive chairman. Kevin is uh, a geologist by background, but uh, most of his uh, career has been uh, in the in banking and investment industry. Andrew Shearer would also be known to many uh, geologists again by background, but uh, been involved in uh, in uh, the broking industry for many years. Uh, as Mark said, I'm a mining engineer by trade and have been involved in development and operations of mines in a number of parts of the world. But more importantly, we'll get on to the Paris Silver Project, which was discovered in uh, 2011. Paris uh, sits here about five and a half hours drive uh, from Adelaide. It's about uh, 90 minutes north of the sealed highway that goes to Perth. Uh, and there's a, this is in our Peter Lumbo tenement here. Um, it was uh, the first resource was uh, the maiden resource was announced in 2013. Uh, further drilling upgraded that resource in 2015. A program in 2016 saw an upgrade of the resource again uh, that was reported in 2017. But what is important in noting this, and I'll lead to uh, the next slide, is that each time the grade has increased, uh, interestingly, even as the cutoff changed from 30 to 50 grams here, the grade still improved. But importantly, in the 2017 uh, resource, the grade was up by 20%, the tons were up by uh, about 5%, and overall the total ounces improved by 20, uh, 26%. And that's what's uh, really been the focus of what's uh, led us to the infill program that's underway now. Relatively shallow, flat-lying ore body, around about uh, 10 million tons in a conceptual pit design, which uh, will bottom out at 120 metres uh, in the early uh, 2020, we uh, refreshed the scoping study. We have some uh, metallurgical test work that's been completed. We're doing some more now. Flow sheet design is, is uh, in place. GTEC work on the pit's been completed. So we've got a number of those uh, elements of the PFS uh, already ticked off. Silver leach recoveries vary in the ore body between 65 and 89%. Uh, the resource average is 74. Uh, and the work we're doing at the moment is focused on that component that has that lower leach recovery, because if we can lift that from uh, 65 to uh, 70 or 75 percent, then uh, it improves the economics of the project significantly. When we uh, refreshed the scoping study, we uh, were looking to use a silver price in Australian dollars of $30 per ounce, and that gave us the encouragement uh, to move forward, raise $8 million in a placement uh, at the end of July, early uh, August. And that was on the basis of presenting this infill drill program and moving the project through to completion of PFS. On the uh, right hand side here is a diagram. This is the conceptual layout of the, uh, the Paris pit. Uh, the blue shading indicates the inferred resource and the red colour is the indicated resource, obviously the resource that has a higher level of confidence. Um, and the program we're undertaking, uh, or initially initiated in September, was a 15,000 metre RC drilling program. And that's these yellow dots that you can see through here. The historical uh, drilling is the, uh, the smaller black dots, particularly here in this indicated area, which was where the uplift came in 2017. Uh, we also have about 700 metres of diamond drilling we'll do through here, which will uh, lead through to the QA, QC or the quality assurance we need to be able to represent or re-estimate a resource uh, early next year. Um, our aim in this, and you can see we focused on the blue inferred areas here and down in the south here, was to improve our confidence and lift the, uh, lift the confidence and bring this into an indicated category, which we could then use for mine planning. Uh, importantly, back in 2017, and sort of draw your attention to these numbers here, there's quite a difference in the grade between the blue inferred material and the red indicated material. And that's what we are anticipating that we're going to replicate in this drill program, where as we improve our confidence in the inferred material, we'll see a grade uplift. So uh, on average, we expect to see this total resource grade improve as well. Uh, we've had encouraging early results and we reported those uh, to the ASX in, in early, uh, early this month, in early November. And uh, this, in fact, is uh, a section that was in that ASX results. Uh, and I suppose my description of this is there's some eye-watering grades in this. If you remember, the average uh, resource grade was 139. You'll see here some numbers, 551, 30, 328. Uh, we have one intersection down here in this hole of uh, over a thousand grams. 
uh, on the other line, which is 25 metres to the south of that, we have a hole which uh, was 14 metres at 200, five at 400. The important thing here is that, uh, is that what we're seeing is that the higher grade is occurring at the uh, contact with the dolomite here, which is this lighter blue, and you can see this 550 grams here, uh, 500 grams here, 1,000 grams in this intersection here. And importantly, we still don't have the assay results for these two holes here in this contact zone. So uh, I suppose my comment would be watch this space. So I expect in the next few weeks, we'll have these results back and we'll be uh, completing the announcement in relation to, uh, to this section and hopefully uh, another line to the north of this where uh, we'll be able to fill in these white gaps which are where we uh, were missing uh, assay results from before. Um, the confidence from that, in fact, in, allowed us to, uh, and, and with the benefit of having enough cash in the bank to expand this program. So very quickly, we decided to uh, expand the uh, 15,000 metre program by another 30%. And we've added about uh, another 70 holes to this program. As I mentioned before, these black holes or these black dots here are where we uh, started infilling. We're now moving out to drill these uh, lighter blue uh, holes and then further afield again, these pink holes, both to the north, infilling some more areas here to the south, but also starting to encroach right on the boundary of the resource. And we anticipate that uh, good results here will allow us to extend this resource position out. So we'll increase the tons as well, but the focus is very much on improving the grade as we uh, lift, the, lift our confidence. We've got about 18,000 metres of this uh, program drilled to date, and that's out of a total of uh, over 20,000. Uh, there's some three and a half thousand samples already gone to the laboratory. Uh, we have some delay on site with drying the samples out before we can ship them to the laboratory. But at the end of this program, we will have uh, sampled probably about 15,000 uh, metres of these holes and those final assays will continue to flow through until uh, February next year. Um, that means that we're going to have news flow about this program uh, for the next uh, at least four months. Uh, That'll lead into, uh, in February, uh, we're running at the moment or uh, have appointed MinCorp our, as our uh, pre-feasibility study managers. Uh, we uh, have some uh, test work that's happening in the ALS laboratories in Burnie, where we're going back to confirm some of the opportunities we think are available with the, uh, to lift the um, recoveries of that 65% material. That's focused on some sizing and uh, maybe de-sliming before we go into flotation. Uh, and that'll be as it leads into optimization of the flow sheet. MinCore in, uh, in the PFS process will also estimate uh, uh, what's needed to get power, water and access to uh, Paris. Um, and finally, we'll have uh, capital and operating expense uh, estimations from that. Finalisation of the drilling and the res re, uh, results from those assays will lead into a resource estimation, which we uh, expect to have concluded in March next year. Then we'll uh, undertake the open pit uh, design and scheduling, final economic evaluation and the PFS we anticipate that we'll have uh, completed and announced to the market in uh, 2021. Um, you can see the backdrop of this uh, of this. Um, Photograph here of the RC drill rig. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not sort of seaside uh, country by any means. And I suppose a picture uh, always tells a thousand words. This is a photograph uh, and taken by uh, one of our a drone we have on site, looking basically from south to north. Um, this line through here, we expect where we had the uh, drill rig through here is line uh, zero. We've started to drill a little bit further south than this. You can see the sample bags here where each of these holes has been. And you can see these 25 metre grids that we're starting to drill. And this is infilling that indicate inferred resource. Um, relatively unpopulated country, it's a little pastoral value. And I suppose a little bit of my background uh, has been uh, developing projects in, uh, in areas which have been subjected to typhoons, have been associated very closely with communities where in fact you may have had to move people. Uh, and this is, uh, has none of those impediments to development. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's relatively flat lying. There's no significant um, waterways or watersheds from here. So from uh, any project uh, uh, advancement, we don't expect to be impeded by uh, some of those issues you might have if you're closer to the Eastern seaboard. 
Just uh, talking about regionally, we, uh, we have plenty of opportunities. This, uh, this is a uh, map of magnetics over the uh, tenement, uh, we call the Peter Lumbo tenement. Uh, Paris is here, this pink outline, this is the conceptual uh, pit and resource outline I've referred to before. And uh, we have seven targets, not all of them named here on this, but seven clear targets that we will drill. Uh, we have a second drill rig moving to site uh, by the end of this month. And uh, we have a program of 6,000 metres looking at these targets. First one we'll tackle, uh, this uh, program will be Helen. Uh, there'd been some historical drilling here at Helen before. Interestingly, the highest uh, result from rock chipping in the district came from Helen, 110 grams. Uh, there was a hole drilled here at Helen where at the bottom of the hole, uh, there was seven metres at over 500 grams silver and, uh, and that was not followed up. So, and, and that was due to financial constraints at the time, not, uh, not geological by any means. So we've got a program of uh, over a thousand metres we'll drill out here at Helen. But importantly, we're also going to step out and, uh, and look at this Argos trend here to the north. Um, Argos has been untouched here because uh, if you've got a good imagination, you can see a line of holes that were drilled here. Uh, that was the edge of a heritage boundary. Um, there are no particular issues, but at uh, the time, heritage clearance hadn't been sought for that area to the north. Uh, we've been through that process. This is cleared now for drilling, and uh, we'll drill over 3,000 metres out here on this Argos trend, which is a, uh, a gravity and magnetic structure that's akin and a long strike uh, from Paris. So uh, watch this space in, uh, in this uh, area as well. Um, other tenements we have in South Australia uh, is the uh, Stewart Shelf package here. Earlier this year with a joint venture deal with Oz, we drilled a target here called Maslin's. Um, there's certainly still some IOCG potential in here. It's in this uh, wonderful belt uh, from Olymp Prometed Hill Olympic Dam through Carapatina and so on. Uh, and more recently we, uh, we did a deal uh, with DGO Gold where they had the opportunity now to spend up to $6.35 million on a joint venture earning. Uh, they're very focused on uh, sediment hosted copper akin to the Zambian copper belt. Uh, they have some tenements that infill this gap here and uh, we expect that they uh, will be drilling by the end of the year. They're out uh, they're out chasing uh, some clearance issues at the moment and uh, we'll have some news flow out of there. Uh, we also applied for more recently some tenements out here to the west in the Fowler domain. Western areas have a nickel discovery here adjacent to it. Um, opportunistically, this ground is available, so we've, uh, we've applied for that. Uh, there's some competing applications from other companies, and uh, we're waiting to see the determination of that. Importantly, we also have a Uno Morgans package here to the east of Paris. Uh, Terramans Manini Dam silver project sits, sits in here. There's certainly a similar structural setting here to Paris. Um, for the want of uh, funds over the prior five or eight years, work hasn't been undertaken here to any significant extent. Uh, and we've actually started to turn our focus to looking uh, to what Paris, uh, so what Paris uh, lookalike opportunities might sit in Uno Morgan. So uh, some interesting opportunities outside just the Paris project here in South Australia. A quick summary, uh, I keep uh, referring to it, but we are a very pinpoint exposure uh, to, um, to the silver price. We have the highest grade primary undeveloped project in Australia. And as I mentioned, uh, really not a, no significant impediments to, uh, to seeing ourselves taking that through to development. We actually have uh, enough cash available that will allow us to move straight into DFS uh, after uh, PFS if the board deems uh, it appropriate. And so the, the Pre-feasibility study due in, uh, in June, I've mentioned the board, we, uh, we have the skill set both within the board and the, uh, and the operating group, the management uh, guys, to be able to uh, drive this project forward. Uh, there's some regional targets which uh, are certainly uh, within distance to be able to enhance anything that we contemplate at Paris. Um, We've got uh, probably the largest drilling program that's occurring in South Australia uh, in 2020 underway, and we'll have news flow from that for the next, uh, certainly for the next three or four months uh, as those assays come in, and including uh, the regional exploration as well. But sitting in a great position with cash of $9 million and, uh, and over $6 million of, uh, of options that are in the money that uh, could be exercised by the end of this year. 
I always finish with a reference to uh, to the gold-silver ratio, and uh, this is what's happened over the last uh, number of years. The historic gold-silver ratio, which is how many ounces of silver you'd need to buy to uh, to equal an ounce of gold, it ran away here in uh, in March to about 124, retreated back here. Long-term historical average is somewhere sort of between 50 and 70. Um, but uh, you know it's sitting at around about 76. So a movement here also sees uh, benefit to uh, to the Paris project. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I can be contacted directly on this email address here, uh, and more than happy to uh, take any questions. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, terrific to see uh, that the company doing so well with the. The, the buoyancy in the market, with the recent capital raising and with the silver price at the same time with the project that you have such as uh, Paris. A couple of questions around the resource. Just curious the, the upgrade that you've had in as you've drilled more, the grades increased. So there's a question around that, but also too, uh, there seem to be some obvious gaps in the, in the, the current drill program uh, for the, uh, from the um, inferred areas that you're not targeting. Can you perhaps sort of talk about those and why you're not um, sort of also targeting those other gaps as you are some? Sure. Um, and look, and I won't try and get into the detail because uh, I, I uh, will mess it up in relation to the geostatistical analysis that goes on in determining the resource. But uh, as we gain more confidence of adjacent mineralization to quite high grade, grade intersections, it allows them to be uh, expanded further into the resource. And uh, also, as you saw in that slide, and, uh, and it's the, uh, that section of, is one of which we've produced uh, great, certainly above average grade. So even if you did simple maths, you'd expect that you would see the grade improving. Uh, that section in the centre, and I won't scroll back, but there is a dike that runs east-west through there. Uh, the mineralisation is a bit uh, less. Uh, we started with a constrained program, and it's always, you know, if we had as much money as you know, you'd ever need, we'd drill the whole thing out. But uh, to get the greatest improvement was the first area that we looked at. Uh, we, uh, the south, southern part of the pit uh, typically has some better grades, so we wanted to chase that as well, which is why we uh, focused those two areas. Um, at some stage or another, we'll end up uh, moving forward and doing some additional drilling in the centre. But at the moment, as I said, it's a, it's a little bit confused with a geolo with geological structure that runs through there. Fair enough, go for the bang for the buck. Absolutely. The, maybe just uh, given the, the, the focus at the moment in South Australia on the, on the, the lockdown, um, is there, are you going to be impacted, do you believe, uh, beyond the, the, the current six days? Uh, look, we don't uh, we don't expect so. Um, we are, are running hard to you know catch up with the news. So two of the department and uh, and SACOM in uh, in South Australia, and uh, in fact, I got an update just prior to this at sort of about nine thirty. We're currently uh, not impacted at site. Fortunately, we had a sh crew shift change uh, before. Uh, earlier in this week before the, any restrictions occurred. So our guys are out at site. They're typically working two on, one off. Uh, there's no uh, impact or there's no restrictions that have been imposed on regional work, as we understand. But um, look, as everyone understands, it's very much a moving feast at the moment. But uh, um, uh, early this morning, we were drilling as normal. Very good. Any quick comments? You didn't run through it in the presentation, but any quick comments on the Tasmanian project? Uh, sure, I, I didn't, I uh, wanted to focus particularly on Paris and Silver today. Um, we picked up some ground, uh, we, we started to look further afield. We've uh, been looking for other opportunities in the precious metal space. Uh, we undertook a, uh, an artificial intelligence targeting exercise over the west coast of Tasmania and asked, uh, asked the, guy, the team to look for something that had a lookalike like Rosebury or Henty. There was ground available, in fact, adjacent to the Rosebury and Henty tenements in, uh, in the west coast of Tasmania, which we pegged. Uh, we've not been able, it was granted in July, we've not been able to get there because of COVID restrictions. But uh, obviously, uh, you know, very well mineralised part of the world, very early stage. There's one drill hole in the tenement that we picked up, uh, which has got some zinc and thallium, uh, which thallium is a great vector for zinc mineralisation. Uh, work to be done there yet. Fair enough. And just finally, uh, just the approvals process that hopefully things continue to go well back with Paris. Um, the approvals process and with the South Australian government, I think it's still called the, the PACE 
project, uh, practical case um, uh, program. Uh, some have described that as a bit of an oxymoron. How do, how do you see that working for, for you and, uh, and Paris? Sure. So look, look, just to clarify, uh, PACE is one of the government supported uh, exploration funding packages. Uh, we, we aren't involved in that at this stage. Um, one of the important approval process is the PEPA process, uh, which is the uh, environmental protection requirements. We have a PEPA in place uh, for our exploration work. We need to go to a high level PEPA for, to have a mining lease uh, at, uh, granted. We've actually start, started to do the preliminary work uh, Historically, the team have done a great job. They've done some early fauna and fauna surveys, which are a good start to that. We've started mapping out and in fact, have met with a regulatory authority, seeing what we need to do and, uh, and getting a case officer assigned to us so that we can start to work through the PEPA approval process to have a mining lease granted. Very good. Thanks, Andrew, to me uh, acronyms. The, um, thank you very much for the presentation today for Investigator and uh, great to see the share price performing the way it has been. Thanks, Mark, and thank you very much uh, to the listeners. Again, uh, point out, please uh, feel free to contact me if anyone has any questions.